figured I'd do a quick video on hinging with uh, using nylon pinned hinges. I'm not a fan of the uh, CA hinges. Yeah, they're quick and easy. And they're stiff, especially after you glue them. And they tend to break after a while. I've used them on 40 to 60 size models. No issues. I've seen lots of them break on bigger planes. As far as I'm concerned, these things are worth the extra effort. Um, the Dubrow's in particular, because that plastic is quite flexible. I've never worn them out, and they take a beating. Um, and if you use them on seaplanes and flying boats, just, just oil the pins, they won't rust. Um, so what you're going to need is a little bit of oil. Like something like that will work just fine. Your three in one oil. I use uh, 80 grit sandpaper. And of course, you're going to need some epoxy. Although, I've been reading where guys are using Gorilla Glue, that wood glue that foams up. I can see that working. That stuff, stuff will stick to damn near anything. So for this video, I'm not using Dubros, but I'm using these Earth Brodak Earth hands. It's the same thing, and uh, I'll be uh, explaining how I do it as we go along. First thing I do is I get them roughened up with the uh, 80 grit. Give the glue something to it's got you got the holes in there and the, the glue will act like pins in those holes but um, I scratch them up anyway because you're gonna get a good bond to the to the blade itself. So I do that to each and every one, both sides. Next thing I'm gonna do is uh, that's where this little fella comes in handy, these bottles. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on each, each one of these joints and on the ends. I'm going to work that oil into the, into the hands and here's what the Kleenex is for. Take it in a butterfly shape or V shape and I roll the X, roll it on the Kleenex to get rid of any excess oil and then I'll lay it on paper towel and that'll take care of any extra that might want to try to creep out of there. So I'll do that with each, each hinge and make sure the oil gets in. I usually go at both sides. You don't want to swap it all over the place. And I try to keep my fingertips dry. I like I wipe them off and eat before I handle the hinges with with alcohol. Flip it around. Do it again. Now I lay it on the on the uh, paper towel here. So if there is a little bit extra, it's going to get sucked up. So I do that for each one. Now the biggest reason for doing this isn't really to lubricate the hinge. <laughs> it's to uh, keep the epoxy from sticking to it, messing up your hinge. I've uh, missed them before and, and the epoxy uh, coated the damn hinge. Even if it gets into the hinge, it won't stick because of the oil. It, uh, the epoxy just won't stick and then if you gently go in with a really dull knife you can dig the epoxy out and just flick it off because it's not stuck to anything it comes off pretty easy other thing you're going to need is a plastic drinking straw this is your epoxy injector Get one a good bunch of these next time you're McDonald's or I just bought a package McDonald's straws work nice because they're bigger 
but uh, this is probably an exercise down, but they work. And what you want to do with this straw, let's take a look at the back of scissors or something, and just uh, don't go at it too much because these straws will break. Just make it oval shape like that. So you're basically just flattening the end of it, creasing it. And then you can stick the straw in your end slot and pull it back and it squeezes out the epoxy. Next thing I'm going to do, put alcohol on a paper towel on any oil I might have gotten on my fingers, off my fingers. We get glowing and mixing up epoxy. I got a stack of paper towels cut up in squares and that's as easy as folding, cutting, folding, cutting instead of sitting there all day cutting them up. I use these Pringles uh, chip can lids to mix epoxy on. Of course your epoxy. Got a straw already I've already been using and this is uh, how I make those squares. Not rocket science, obviously. There. And my bottle of methyl hydrate, which I opened beforehand. So that when a sudden need arises, you just grab it. Soak your pads, which are also good for wiping your hands off. And I'll have another sheet torn in half. And I'll dose one of those with alcohol before I, after I mix the epoxy, I should say. So I'll stir it up and we'll just keep on going here. I'll take the uh, paper towel. Fold it, and that way you can keep unfolding it and cleaning off your hands as you go if, you, if need be. And I, I always find I need to I put it on the wing or something plastic. It's dope. Don't let alcohol rest on dope. Um, but that's plastic, so I'll just leave it there. I'll take my straw. I'll make a pass in the epoxy. Suck some of it into the, the uh, straw. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. It's not really necessary, but see. Take another quick pass and uh, pull it into the straw. Take a take a piece of that cut paper towel. I'll wipe any excess off that's on the outside. Next thing I'm going to do, if you know how deep the wood is, it's better. And you could even mark the straw, how far in you need to go. There's two ways you can do this. You can go in, you know, as deep as you need to, and you can squeeze it in. Which I do, kind of do it two ways. I'll squeeze some of it in, but you don't want to squirt it all in the end there. Or you pull the straw out between your fingers and that squeezes the epoxy into the joint. This this one's got a bit of a it's rather large. It's not really really loose but it's loose enough where it'd be uh, I want to put a little more. Now here's where this this fella comes. You get an epoxy on your fingers all the time. You got this wet thing here to clean them off. Next thing I do, scoop up some epoxy and I put a very thin coat on the blade and I don't want to get too close to that oiled part of the blade. I'm probably maybe an eighth of an inch away or less. 
So I got a nice coat, not a whole lot, because it's going to scrape off as it goes into the end slot. And again, I'm cleaning off my fingers as I go. That keeps your fingerprints, epoxy prints, down to the minimum. And I'll just kind of, in this case, it's a bit loose, so I'm going to rock it up and down. Now I got epoxy. note here and that's not a bad thing. So what I'll do is uh, clean the, put this thing back. This is not an easy thing to do on a tiny subject. Take one of my squares, I'll wipe the stir stick off and just remove that. There's nothing on the bottom. And I'll take another square. This is why you got these. And give it a wipe. But just, just one pass. You make too many passes, you just turn making a mess. And I just send it home. And where this is on the trailing edge of the stab, I just push it down so that my hinge is on a 90, flush with the stab. trailing edge. And what that's going to do for me is make is ensure that, that all hinges will be the same distance. You won't get that click 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 when it flexes. And it's also going to ensure that it's square. So I'm going to do one more without yabbering too much. Scoop it. Pull it in, clean it off, figure your distance and I know the first couple of times I tried doing this, I made them, I had epoxy everywhere. See that this is no better than the old way of doing it. Yeah, it's it's a million times better than trying to stuff it in there. It's a lot a lot tighter here once you get the knack of it. And I'd rather be wiping off a little too much of epoxy squirting out of that hinge slot than having a starved uh, joint. Well, it's not really a glue joint. But It's uh, more of a challenge when it comes to putting the other side on. Boom, you're in there. You can throw these away. I know where these two are, but when you're wiping the hands, throw the things away because I find end up grabbing it and then next thing you know you have more epoxy all over your fingers and everything. So again push it in tight with the thing 90 degrees and it's done. So I won't bore you with the rest of them. And now I'm gonna moisten this one with some alcohol. Not dripping wet. This stuff is setting up and that's fine. It doesn't matter. Because even when it's tacky, the uh, alcohol will remove the um, tacky epoxy. Now the epoxy is kind of at that really stringy gooey stage. So I keep an eye on that. I'll go back over my hinges. I'll remove them. Just wipe off any heavy stuff that might have stuck to the hinge. 
if you wanted to you could very very carefully put a dab of oil on these again but the oil will be staying inside where it needs to be but I've had nothing but good luck with this method. I've never had a hinge failure. Looks good. When I put the epoxy on these blades, I make sure I get it in those little holes that are drilled in the blades. And I'm going to move along as fast as I can here. It's 30 minutes, but that's a setting time. You don't, you don't have that much time to work with this stuff. Oh, I used to own a hobby shop in Rocky Mountain House, Alberta, Canada here told me how to do this and I think he got the idea it was of RCM one of those magazines I'll double check it It'd be kind of shitty to put this together find out you get a dry dry socket In slot, whatever you want to call it. Bring all these up. Soak a fresh one here. So this is where you're going to be cleaning your hands quite a bit. Push them all home right away because get them all started. And this is why you have this alcohol soaked paper towel there. enough there I can see what's going on with looks like I succeeded at getting this one together oh there's one there's always one that uh, piles up on you Right over so I don't make a mess. Check the bottom, it's not as bad. Oh, there's two. This is why you check the bottom. That's it. Put it all home. Done. Beautiful. Do up one of my squares with some booze. Yeah, it's a little too much. Just get soak it off there. It's funny how you can iron down your covering. And still get little corners picking up when you're at this stage of the game. The reason why I don't want this sopping wet with alcohol is I don't want to get them right into the pin and washing out the oil that's in there. Turn it 
turn this inside out like that and the bottom. I flex the hinge and the bits of epoxy that are still hanging on there. I'll uh, get them before it hardens up. And when you when you operate the hinge, it'll actually go in there if there's any left, and grab it, and it'll come back stuck to the hinge, and just buff it off with a little bit of a paper towel and epoxy or uh, alcohol. Yeah. I already did the bottom. We'll give it another. Give it another look. You see, no, it's not unusual that you'd have to go over this. Two or three times, sometimes. And remember, don't have this soaked. Just nice and really damp, because you don't want it. Like I mentioned before, going right in there and washing the oil out of the hinge joint itself. And no clicking, nice and smooth. It's a little stiff because those hinges are in there fairly tight and this loosens up that's my uh, oriental or all my planes are like this they're a little stiff they won't quite they start falling on their own weight but after a couple of flights They get really nice and loose. Plus, after I'd say no, no uh, sooner than 48 hours, you can put a little drop of oil on those hinges again. But I uh, make sure your epoxy's good and hard first, all nice and set up. All right, that's it for hinging.